Aviation history loves paradoxes, and although the most daring concepts rarely become production aircraft, they determine the direction of the entire industry. The X-44 Manta concept was one such example, proving a simple truth. The fewer protruding parts and spaced control surfaces, the better the stealth and the more room for design solutions. So is it any wonder that the newest American sixth generation fighter jet, the F-47 from Boeing, has a painfully familiar outline? Sometimes to understand the future, it's enough to take a closer look at the unrealized past, which is what we'll be doing in today's video. In the late 1990s, NASA and the U.S. Air Force began seriously considering whether it was possible to build a tailless fighter that would rival its competitors in controllability and stability. Thus, the X-44 multi-axis no-tail aircraft or Manta concept was born. The idea was as accessible as possible and no less daring. To transfer the tasks of pitch, yaw, and roll to the engine thrust vector, to leave the aerodynamic control surfaces only as auxiliary ones, and in the future to completely abandon the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. The design was based on the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, which featured a radically different geometry, a stretched delta wing without a tail, which promised not only lower aircraft visibility, but also greater internal fuel capacity. The X-44's engine and fuselage were carried over directly from the F-22, with key differences including a delta wing, tailless design, and larger fuel tanks. At the time, the idea of eliminating unnecessary mechanical elements that limited aerodynamics and exposed the aircraft sounded almost like an intellectual provocation, even if it ended up being way ahead of its time. It's important not to confuse the manned X-44 Manta concept with the X-44A, a small unmanned demonstrator from Lockheed Martin Skunk Works Division that successfully flew in 2001 but was only unveiled to the public in 2018 as part of Skunk Works' 75th anniversary celebrations. However, the X-44A was not a scaled-down version of Manta, but a parallel but related technological branch, proving that tailless aerodynamics was no longer a fantasy but a subject for real-world testing. The X-44A skin was believed to be made of nanocarbon fiber, and the craft itself was powered by a Williams F-112 turbojet engine which we've previously seen in the AGM-129 Advanced Cruise Missile Stealth Cruise Missile. The original X-44 concept was powered by modified Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW100 engines, the same as the F-22 Raptor, giving it a top speed of 1,500 miles per hour with a combat radius of up to 1,988 miles and a service ceiling of 49,000 feet. While there's no reliable data on the dimensions of the X-44, we do know that the wingspan of its sister aircraft, the X-44A, was half that of its successor, the RQ-170 Sentinel. 65 feet for the RQ-170 versus 29 feet for the X-44A. One area where they could have a clear similarity is in ease of transportation, since information has surfaced more than once that, as in the case of the RQ-170, the X-44's wings will be detachable. But compactness was by no means what was required of this ambitious vehicle. For the tailless concept to become viable, it was necessary to prove that the engines could act as rudders under both normal and extreme conditions. This evidence has been methodically collected since the late 1980s using test beds and flying laboratories such as F-15 Advanced Controls Technology for Integrated Vehicles, aka ACTIVE. A NASA and U.S. Air Force flying laboratory based on the F-15B, where they tested the viability of using the engine as a fully-fledged control element. The aircraft was equipped with vectored nozzles and a smart flight control system that combined commands from the aerodynamic rudders and nozzles, maintaining course and turning power, maneuvering at high angles of attack, and maintaining overall digital stability. Propulsion Controlled Aircraft PCA, on the F-15 the next step, where algorithms translated the pilot's commands into adding thrust to the left and or right engines, allowing the aircraft to fly and land while simulating control surface failure, effectively using only the engine control levers. And finally, Versatile Stability and Flight Simulator Test Aircraft, VISTA, F-16 Multi-Axis Thrust Vectoring, MATV. A modified F-16D simulator equipped with a multi-axis thrust vectoring nozzle to test the aircraft's controllability at high angles of attack, 
course holding, and roll near stall, as well as the distribution of tasks between aerodynamics and thrust. Thanks to the results obtained during these tests, specialists were able to convince the military that the aircraft's stability and maneuverability could be ensured by a combination of a flight control system and vectored thrust, meaning that a tailless configuration was viable. It's a shame that despite this, funding for the X-44A was still cut off in 2000. Subsequently, some proposals for modifications to the FB-22 supersonic stealth bomber involved continuing research within the framework of existing developments under the Manta project, emphasizing tail as appendage. But these ideas never gained the understanding of the command and authorities. Today we understand that the X-44A wasn't just a tailless F-22, but the missing link between the classified RQ-3 Dark Star and subsequent demonstrators like the P-175 Polcat. It was on these aircraft that Skunk Works developed composite structures, tailless control, and the unmanned command and control systems that are widely used today. In 2020, the X-44A took pride of place on display in their research and development gallery at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, but his contribution lived on in the UAV logic with which the Air Force has been infusing its NGAD over the past decade. For further clarification, let's take a look at what the futuristic F-47 has in common with the daring experiment from the 90s called Manta. Like the X-44, the F-47's engineers removed the tailplane, thereby reducing radar reflective elements and keeping angular body protrusions to a minimum. Vertical structures are generally easier to detect by enemy air defense systems and radars as their objects in sharp angles from which electromagnetic pulses can be reflected, creating a return signal. By removing these elements, you give your opponent no chance of clearly visualizing a flying object. Not to mention that the newer fighter places special emphasis on flexible temperature modes, ensuring that even the most advanced infrared search and track Erst system will be unable to detect it. The X-44 took a radical approach to the idea of full pitch, yaw, and roll control via 3D thrust vectoring, eliminating traditional control surfaces. And while there's no reliable information yet about the NGAD fighter's propulsion system, it's logical to assume it'll also be part of the total stealth policy that Boeing's pursuing in developing the F-47. In other words, control functions will be transferred almost entirely to the engine in digital fly-by-wire algorithms. It's no wonder that the value of contracts signed in 2024 alone with Pratt & Whitney and General Electric exceeded $3.5 billion and the program to create new adaptive engines for the F-47, Next Generation Adapter Propulsion, NGAP, is now in full swing. In the X-44, increasing the delta wing's root thickness area was seen as an effective way to stash even more fuel and payload in the internal compartments while eliminating unnecessary components on the external pylons. In the X-47, this has ceased to be an engineering whim and has become a geographic argument since NGAD will almost certainly be designed primarily for long-range missions in the vastness of the Indo-Pacific theater where survivability and range are many times more important than versatility, as with the F-35 fighter. As for the unmanned nature of the X-44A project, despite initial plans to create a manned and unmanned NGAD fighter, the military nevertheless decided that it would be wiser to turn the F-47 into a node interacting with a swarm of collaborative combat aircraft drones. So from the concept of being a UAV in the X-44A, we came to working with UAVs as a single system in the F-47. According to the latest data, the F-47 fleet will consist of at least 185 fighters, which is enough to replace the existing F-22 Raptor fleet at a ratio of 1 to 1. Additionally, each fighter will operate in a loyal wingman CCA group of at least two UAVs. However, according to U.S. Air Force officials, this number is intended to be increased to five or even eight given Lockheed Martin's previous demonstrations of how the F-35 operates well in conjunction with eight UAVs. So it wouldn't be wrong to consider each of the 185 new aircraft as a separate fighter unit, especially given the emphasis on work centricity and electronic warfare. By the mid-2020s, the media was increasingly reporting tailless concepts for advanced fighter jets from the US, Europe, and Asia and for good reason. Modern air defense systems seem much further, theaters of potential military operations are becoming ever wider, and the electronic load is growing by leaps and bounds. 
So the F-47's logic of focusing on a large wing, maximum streamlining, low observable form, and long range is not unique. But all of this is packaged into a production program with specific deadlines, which greatly distinguishes Boeing's brainchild from its almost direct, albeit distant, ancestor, the X-44, as well as other bold demonstrators. The F-47's first flight scheduled for 2028, with operational use expected in the early 2030s. If you imagine the evolution of fighter jets as a change in the languages of the era, then 30 years ago the X-44 and X-44A created a dictionary, and the F-47 turned the words into coherent sentences, bringing the idea to fruition. What lessons from the X-44's past do you think Boeing could use in developing the American sixth-generation fighter? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.